Let's go down on the sideline. Ava Perrine standing by. Real special guest today, Ava, in the rain. Hi. Thanks, Gary. I'm here, of course, with the winning coach, Jim Brazel. Uh, tell us what happened at the end. I wasn't so clear about that time business. Well, at first, we weren't either. What happened, there was a holding on the play. You know, we just had our quarterback, uh, who was the punter at the time, just run around. That we knew the time would expire as long as he wasn't tackled. And we thought the game was over. And what happened, there was a holding call, and it can't end on a penalty. But... Uh, you know, they had to set the ball again, and we had to take a snap. It was kind of a formality, but it was kind of crazy there at the end. Now, we discussed the fact that uh, your players were slightly smaller. Do you think that worked to your advantage in, in the rain and the muck today? Yeah, no, I don't know if it worked to our advantage. If anything, probably it was a disadvantage to us. We are a quick football team. It depends on uh, our quickness and not our size. And they're more of a running football team than we are. So actually, the weather conditions were, I think, maybe a, more of a benefit to them or should have been. Uh, but this is a great group. We won a game like this at William Penn earlier in the year where you thought we, you know, we shouldn't be able to, against a bigger, bigger team, move the ball away we have. And uh, this has just been a storybook season for me. And I can't say enough good about this team. And I'm so proud of them. Congratulations. And of course, this is your son. Uh, this is Michael. Hi. 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 See the camera, the camera right there? Hi. Great. Thanks a lot for Thank being you. with us, and, yep. and uh, go get dry. Okay. Thank you again. And I think I will do the same, and it's back to you, Gary. Thank you, Ava. Great job on the sideline all season. We enjoyed being with you again, Ava. And uh, super job under adverse conditions. Thanks. Jim Hegewold on the far sideline did a great job for us today as well. We'll have more for you in just a moment. Thanks for those signs, Jim. <laughs> well, the last stand and pose for some pictures with it. And all, right. the, and all the moms and dads are down on the sideline in the mud, and they're having some fun taking pictures. And everybody wants to get their hands on that thing before it goes into the trophy case. All the players. That's right. I think you might want to put some mud on it when you put it in, though. This has been a muddy day. They should put some mud on a trophy, let it go into the trophy case that way. Uh, it's going to be hard to get the mud off of it after <laughs> all those guys have handled it. <laughs> Terrific football game here under uh, very bad conditions, and, and Omar and I want to send our kudos off to our crew, who has had to work under some really miserable conditions this year. We joked about the rain that we've had uh, just about every Saturday that we've done a game it has rained. And we've had some on Friday nights as well. It's not easy working those cameras and, and the equipment and laying out all the camera cables and then packing everything up after the game's over and when the weather's real bad. And our guys are as, as good as you're going to find anywhere in this region at, at doing it and putting on a pretty good football game. And, and we're proud to be a part of it. You go, guys. <laughs> you always say it so nicely. <laughs> You, know, you, put, you put that, it just summed up. In that. Here, I try to be very verbose, and you just summarize it in those <laughs> wonderful catchphrases that you come up with. You know, you know, what's the best one this year? Something about wolf. Selling wolf tickets. It's going to stick in my mind forever. <laughs> it's been a memorable season, and once again, I've enjoyed working with you, Omar. Uh, it's always a pleasure. Uh, you make it fun. There, well, there was a bunch of us in, in this press box today. Really, really. A couple of radio stations <laughs> and, and all the officials and everything else. Uh, crowded box and, and a good place to be on an afternoon like this. Uh, we enjoyed this season. Again, uh, it's, it's been a long one. We appreciate uh, the fine comments we've received from people along the way uh, at the schools and, and as well uh, the viewers who've let us know how much they've enjoyed our telecast of these football games throughout uh, this season. So uh, it's, it's been a long one. This is the 17th game in the season for us. It's the most we've ever done here on Sports Network Delmarva. And uh, it's been a marathon, but it's been one that's been enjoyable. And our next sports action, we're going to take a couple of weeks off here. And our next sports action will be coming to you from indoors, the slam dunk to the beach, where we'll work a whole bunch of games in two days and bring you the best of the action from that uh, holiday tournament. Check this channel for dates and times in Kent and Sussex counties on what games will be shown and when they'll be shown. Once again, the final score, Salesianum 14 and Seaford 6. I'm Gary Lang. For Omar Bashir, Ava Perrine, Jim Hegelwald, and our entire SND crew, thanks for being with us. Good evening, everybody.
Tens of thousands of CDs to play through your home stereo on 30 great channels. Digital Music Express. Give us a call. This is TCI Cablevision, Channel 2, serving Newcastle County. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Channel 2 High School Football Game of the Week, the postseason edition, as today the two-time defending state champion William Penn Colonials take on the Sals of Salesianum. We are broadcasting from Baynard Stadium, the home field of Salesianum, plus many other teams that play in in this kind of game, whether it be the semifinal or the finals, many times, regular season rivals, and of course the Sounds got the upper hand earlier in the year. Back on September the 18th, Salesianum defeated William Penn 14 to nothing, but these two schools know each other very well. Um, I think the overall season uh, career record is tied at eight and eight the, the times that they've met. Um, they know each other, they usually play each other once, sometimes twice a year, especially recently, so they do know each other very well. Experts say that the slight edge this week to Salesianum, but William Penn coming in here, sort of surprising team. They're eight and two, but they really play well as a team. Not a real standout on this offensive squad. Well, Bruce Reynolds has put together a squad. Not many people didn't think much of them this year, but they came in second, tied for the flight A lead, of course, but this is the uh, runner-up berth here in the tournament. But Bruce has put together a squad that knows how to win. That's one of the things he said all season. The kids have a pendant for coming back and they've done that throughout the year. Offensively, you look to Maurice Hunter and Devon Wilson out of the backfield. These two kids have breakaway speed, and of course, the whole offense is keyed by Beats and their quarterback. Hey, he's a steady kind of field general. We've had him a couple of times on the game of the week, and the Colonials are always in the ball game. And of course, when you talk about William Penn football, the defense has proven to be strong again this year. Up front, Lee Stoppel, hey, he's a premier lineman both ways. Salesianum today, eight and two. Ranked number two in the state of Delaware coming in on their home field, trying to make a berth into the uh, into the finals of this tournament. Coming in today, Jim Brazel in his first year as head coach of Salesianum, making it to the tournament, and this is a very strong Salesianum team. Well, we had a chance to watch them last week on the game of the week as they wrapped up their season at Glasgow, and it's a Salesianum team with, that it's multifaceted. We've spoken about their weapons. It's all key by Dan McGee at the quarterback position. The kid runs the option very, very well. He can throw off of it. He has Laudine out of the wide receiver spot. But with Lightcap and Nelson out of the backfield, the Sallies, you just can't key on any one thing. Jim has his team honed. They're undefeated in state, and they're really looking forward to this match against that old-time rival defensively, though. You know, you talk about the, the size of Slays Anim in the past. These kids are quick. They get to the football. Hey, we saw some defensive play last week that was outstanding. I would expect the same thing today. Good matchup. On paper, this is a very close matchup between these two very good football squads. Now, you've been in this situation before, the pressure situation as both a player and a coach for a couple of different sports. How do you expect different people to react to a situation like this? Well, the kids are all anxious to get started right now, and it's been a long time since any of us were involved in things like this. But from a Salesianum standpoint, they've built all year. They've played top-notch opposition both in and out of state. So everything's normal right now. You try to keep the game on as normal a footing as possible. William Penn's going up against the number two ranked team in the news journal papers, and many would consider the top team. So Bruce has his kids to the point where, hey, we're going to get after the big guys today and prove that we belong in the tournament. So everybody's juiced right now. They're in a the locker room. They want to get it started in two and a half minutes. So Lazy Adam, eight and two. William Penn, eight and two. At stake, a fight with Seaford, who is undefeated next week in the final game. This should be a great football game. The weather so far has held off. It's very balmy here. It's about 50 degrees. There is a slight breeze, and we expect that to pick up as the afternoon goes on. And there is a threat of rain before this thing is over. We just got to hope that that holds off before uh, while, while we are well out of here tonight. We're going to take a break. When we return, the kickoff of today's football game. We'll also have all the starting lineup stats and stories when the game of the week returns. Welcome back to Baynard Stadium. The coin has been tossed. Salesiano won the toss. Have They have elected to defer, so they will kick the football off. Salesiano would rather have the wind at their backs than get the football first. Does that surprise you? I don't know. It's surprising, Bill. A lot of teams in these days choose to defer until the second half, take the wind. They don't lose the option of receiving the ball later on, but 
Chin has a lot of confidence in his defense also set the tone for the game. Taking a look at Bo Hunter back deep for William Penn. Randy Tink will do the kickoff duties. He has the ball teed off on the 40-yard line for Salesianum. Nice size crowd here today at Bannard Stadium, and we are underway. A high end-over-end -end kick. Taken inside the 10-yard line. That's Devon Wilson carrying the football. And William Penn will start out on offense. Devon Wilson handed it off to Bo Hunter. I think there was a little confusion there, but let's set that Penn offense, Bill. J.R. Beatson is the quarterback. Jamal Smith will be starting at fullback. There's Wilson and Hunter, your backs. Trubinsky and Asik, the ends with Hollis, McCord, Newell, Taylor, and Lee Stoppel anchoring that offensive line. The ball's on the 22-yard line. First and 10 for the Colonials. Handoff up the middle. Looked like Bo Hunter running the football for the Colonials. No, that was Wilson. Number 22, Devon Wilson. Gets good yardage on first down. That's something that Penn's going to have to do against this Salesianum defense. Inglesius, Petlock, Zimmel, Novotny, and Parallac. Dolphin, Grushkin, O'Malley, the linebackers. Lorem, Laudine, and Lightcap. Very active secondary. And some of these kids had grand games last week against Glasgow. Yeah, especially David Lorem for that Sally secondary. Second down play. Wilson carrying it again. Close to a first down. I think he's going to be just short of it. Carrying around the left side of that offensive line. Devon Wilson, 5'11", 190 pounds, speedster. Averaged over five yards a carry for Penn this year. Looks like they're going to be a little bit shy. Sally's defensive line digs in, third down and short. Semi-final game in the Division I state tournament. Beatson, this is Hunter. And he is stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Jason Geoffrey comes up and makes the stop for Salesianum, and the punting unit of William Penn will come onto the football field. Sally's in a blitz situation. Geoffrey with real quick corner support. Gets penetration in the backfield, and Bo Hunter with nowhere to go. Actually lost about three yards on that play. Chris Courier will do the punting for William Penn. Laudeen. And Nelson back for Salesianum. The snap is fumbled. Courier's running for his life. And he's going to be short uh, of the first yeah, down. Yeah, but I'll tell you what. There's going to be a face mask penalty here. And it, because of that live ball penalty, going to be enough for a first down here. So Penn gets a big break. Here's the snap. It's low. And now he's in a heap of trouble. And he's not going to get the first down. But there's the face mask grab. And... The flag comes in, and Pennell continue their drive. The referee is now discussing things with Justin McCord, one of the captains of that Colonial team. The drive will stay alive. The first break of the game goes by way of William Penn. There's referee Jerry White making the call. And this is a Delmarva Football Officials Association crew working today's game. Jerry White's the referee. We'll get the rest of his crew as play goes on. The ball will sit on the 42-yard line of William Penn. They'll get a second chance here, first down and 10. Wilson carrying the football up the middle. Tough, tough to run on Sally's up the middle. That's Grush going to tackle out of his linebacker spot. One of the things Penn likes to establish in they haven't had a whole lot of success with this year is the fullback game out of the wing tee. If they get the fullback game going with Jamal Smith this afternoon, that makes Bo Hunter and Devon Wilson even more effective. Sam Hanna in the football game at one of the tight ends for William Penn. You'll see Hanna, Dombrowski, and Oslik in the game for Penn at different times. Second down play. Play action. Beatson has time. Throwing over the middle. Complete to Dombrowski for a first down. Shane Drabinski, I should say. Thank you. First down. Beatson on his first pass had time and found the seam over the middle. Simple drop back and good protection, but Drabinski on a little drag pattern gets into the seam of the Sally zone. 
and Penn with their second first down. Back to the ground. Wilson finds a hole and gets a first down for William Penn. Bruce Reynolds goes back to the ground game and picks up 13 yards on that play. The mark of a good team is when you make somebody pay for a critical error, and the face mask penalty against Salesianum comes under that category. And Penn on the move here now with a couple of first downs after that botched punt. The ball will sit on the 29-yard line. The Salesianum Brain Trust led by first-year head coach Jim Brazel. Handoff, Wilson up the middle, big running room and another first down. Craig Laudine comes up and makes the stop, but the William Penn offense does such a great job of misdirection and, and, and faking the ball. It's the interior line play of the offense. Scott Newell at the center, but the guards are the key for Penn. Watch Nate Taylor and Justin McCord. They're two good ones, 60 and 65, and they open the hole that time. 7.48 left to play in the first quarter, no score. Opening drive, Wilson again up the middle. Again, good yardage on first down as Wilson barrels his way through the middle, carrying a couple of Salesian defenders with him. Matt Dauphin finally came up and made the stop. Eventually, you'll see Bruce Reynolds fake that play up the middle, and they'll go outside. You can sense some excitement among the William Penn kids. Uh, got new life on the penalty, and this is an impressive drive. The ball is just outside the 10-yard line, second down, one yard to go. The ball is on the ground, and Salesianum has recovered the football on the fumble. William Penn that time tried exa to do exactly what we said. They, they faked to Wilson up the middle, and they fumbled the exchange, and Salesianum recovers the football. A lot of penetration for Salesianum, and it looked like Pete Lock on the penetrating move out of his tackle position into the backfield and caused the fumble. And there's disappointment on Bruce's face. The Sal's dodge a bullet, and they will start on offense behind senior quarterback Dan McGee. And they're in their I formation. On the ground, Dave Lightcap spins, breaks a tackle, and finally brought down. Shane Drabrinsky coming in, leading the charge for that Colonial defense. Loss of four on the play. Well, McGee's at quarterback, Lightcap and Nelson in the backfield, Laudine the flanker, Joffrey and Pete Lock, your receivers. Novotny, Kirk, Iglesias, Orga, and Smith. You all see, also see Grushka on the offensive line. The ball is sitting on the nine yard line of Salesianum, second down and 14 to go. Don't be surprised to see McGee, McGee throw it. No, he's gonna run the football and has some running room. Get some good blocking and out very close to a first down. You know, Dan McGee rushed for 375 yards this year, and he did a great job that time of just tucking the ball away and gaining good yardage. Well, as Mike Petlock's block downfield, he shield blocked the cornerback, and that allowed McGee to have a lot of running room around the corner once he picked up the seam. Just short of the first down, it'll be third down with one yard to go. Don't be surprised to see Matt Nelson carrying the football in this play. Now they're going to play option, and the ball is on the ground. It's a fumble. It's still loose, and it looks like William Penn has recovered the football on the 13-yard line. Couldn't see who came up with the ball. It may have been Ernie Saunders. They played option back to the unbalanced side, short side, and it was covered right away. Bo Hunter right there, Jamal Smith there. Salons go unbalanced right, bring the option back to the weak side, and it doesn't work. They'll start first and 10 from the 12. Nothing doing on first down that time. 
Mike Iglesias coming up and making the stop for the defense. It was Devon Wilson carrying the football for William Penn. They actually lose two yards that play. The ball goes back to the 15-yard line. Being entertained by the William Penn marching band right in front of us. <laughs> we are being entertained for sure. They are like <laughs> right in front. Second down and 13, no score, just underway first quarter. Here's a reverse, Salazi Adams defense reads it. Bo Hunter ends up with the football after taking the handoff from Wilson. And they lose yardage on that play again. Mike Peatlock coming up making the stop for Salazi Adams. Here's your counter crisscross inside and you can see Peatlock fight, fight off the block of the pulling tackle. You know, Pete Locke used to be a defensive end, so he, he understands how to um, contain on a play like that. He really did a nice job that time. Third down and long for the Colonials. Inside handoff, another fumble. Something's happening inside, and we can check this one again. Pete Locke with another outstanding bit of penetration, and he is all over J.R. Beetson before he can even make the handoff. Watch 85, middle of your screen. That's gonna cause a fumble every time, and that's what caused a fumble on the opening drive of Penn. It's gonna bring up fourth now. It's like about 13 to go. The Colonials will go for it here on fourth down. Beatson wants to throw, has time. Looking for Drabinski. Incomplete. Out of bounds. That would have been very, very close to a first down. A little fade pattern. Beatson looking for Drabinski, and just off his fingertips. And you mentioned the term dodging a bullet. Here's the fade. Had a turn over the other shoulder, mm -hmm. though. Receivers always try and turn their, themselves to the sideline side, so Shane got turned around a little bit there. The Sals will come back out on offense. First down and 10 from the 17-yard line. McGee, play action. Has time. Going deep. Looking for Laudine. Just beyond his fingertips. That's a well-conceived football play. Great play action by McGee in the backfield and fake there, fake the end around. Freezes everybody. That ball's right on the money and mm. Laudine just off his outstretched fingertips. Craig Laudine is an exciting football player. He will get you on a punt return, a kickoff return. He runs the football in the end around and he catches the ball as well. Second down and 10. Straight drop back for McGee. Again, looking for Laudine, and this time it's complete for a first down out to the 43-yard line. I like those two calls. The one on first down tells the defense, hey, I can't load up against the run here, and I got to play a little bit more loose. Come right back on second down with this throw. A little post pattern. Laudine shields off the defender. Nice grab. Great blocking that time on the offensive line, giving Dan McGee plenty of time. Now Salazianum coming up with three receivers here on the near side. McGee fires it to Lightcap, who has good yardage again on first down. Pickup of nine, crossing over into Colonial territory. Obviously the scouts upstairs for Salazianum saw something in the Penn defense that pointed to the passing game because McGee comes out throwing on their second possession. First quarter action from Baynard Stadium. Bill Kamizeroff along with Angie Rossi bringing you the Division I semifinal game. No score, 217 left to play here in the first quarter. Second down, two yards to go for Salesiano. Now they go with the same formation, but to the other side. And it's the same play. And it's almost picked off. That time, Devon Wilson saw the play coming and he sort of waited and, and came up there and almost picked it off. That ball goes a long way on that out. and. If that defender reacts accordingly, there's nothing but stripes between himself and the goal line. I'm not sure we'll see that play again today. <laughs> It'll bring up a third down now for Salesiano. The ball right on the 50-yard line. Light cap. Left side, first down. Pickup of six on that play. Straight ahead power football out of the eye 
Matt Nelson with an excellent lead block out of his fullback position, gets Lightcap the first down. Dave Lightcap rushed for 400 yards this year. Matt Nelson, the fullback, also rushed for just over 400 yards this year, the backfield tandem of Salazianum. And you're right, Nelson does a, they both do a good job of blocking when the other carries the football. Well, you add McGee to the, to the duo who had over 400, and he piles up the yards, so it's a very potent running attack. Dan McGee, under center. This is Nelson carrying the football. Picks up a yard, that's about it. Looked like big Ernie Hill on the stop. That defensive front three of William Penn is very large. You have Stoppel at 270, Washington at 243, and Hill on the other side at 270. Well, Penn has been known for the big guys up front, but their purpose on this defense is to free up the linebackers. Devon Wilson, Ernest Saunders. Saunders only a sophomore, he's a good one. Watch number 50. McGee wants to throw. And he's hit from behind by number 70. That's Lee Stoppel, who sacks Dan McGee. Stoppel showed a little bit of quickness there. McGee on the straight drop back, maybe setting up a little screen here. And all of a sudden, there's Stoppel right in his face. It'll bring up a third down and long. And Salazi Adam wants to call timeout and talk about this play. Timeout on the field. We will take a timeout as well. 46 seconds left to play here in the first quarter from Baynard Stadium. No score in the Division I state tournament, the semifinal game. Every morning, we send our children one day closer to their future. That's why at Bank of Delaware, every time you get a loan, Open a new account. We'll give you special credits to help your local schools get the athletic gear, computer equipment, and other learning tools that children need. Because at Bank of Delaware, we believe that the best investment in the future is an investment in our children. It's been a pleasure for Tom DeLucia, Chartered Life Underwriter and Financial Consultant, to sponsor Delaware High School Sports. For over 25 years, Tom DeLucia has served the people of Delaware with personalized insurance programs. Tom DeLucia can take the mystery out of financial planning and insurance by finding a program to meet your needs. Learn the real purpose of life insurance, disability insurance, IRAs, and other retirement plans. Tom has earned the trust and respect of his many clients, and you too can experience that same personal service. Call Tom DeLucia at 478-9505 or visit him at 9 The Common, Silverside Road. A third down play for Salesiana. McGee drops back, throws the ball deep. Incomplete. Intended for Geoffrey on the other side of the field. You know, folks may question why the timeout by Salesiana to talk over the third down play. Well, the reason is because with only 40 seconds left in the first quarter, you want the wind at your back if you, number one, when you throw the ball, but secondly, on the incompletion, you want to be able to punt the ball with the wind at your back, and a good call by Jim Brazel on this fourth down. They'll have the wind at their back for this punt. McGee will do the punting for Salesiano. Good snap. He's being rushed. Gets it off, and it's a good kick. Bounces at the 22, and Hunter wants no part of that one, and it rolls inside the five-yard line. Nice job by the Salesiano special teams. Dan McGee pins that one inside the five where the Colonials will come out first down and 10 from their own four yard line with just 25 seconds left here in the first quarter. Although Salesiano didn't score on the drive, what they did was they switched the field position momentum because Bruce had it early on and what Bruce is saying to his kids right now is don't come out of the huddle. We're not going to go into the win. The end of the quarter will play out, and they'll switch sides, and then they'll have the win at their back. So right away, Bill, the weather starts to play, and some of the coaching moves that are made here as we end the first quarter. And as the afternoon goes on, that win will become even more of a factor as the clock ticks down to zero. The first quarter is in the books. No score here from Baynard Stadium. The winner of this game will play Seaford next week in the Division I state championship game as the first quarter comes to an end. We'll take a break. When we come back, second quarter action from Baynard. Salesiano and William Penn are scoreless.
exciting things about QVC is, is that we're on the cutting edge of electronics or photography. I don't think if you went into an electronic store, you would get half of the information that we give you on one item in just an eight-minute program presentation. Walt Disney Pictures. Huck Finn was the kind of boy who went looking for trouble. Come on, Finn! And usually found it. You're going to end up with the devil himself. That'd be just fine by me. He fought for freedom. Oh, busted Jim out. He lived for danger. It's the boy with that runaway slave! Come on! And he loved every minute of it. Go for the glory, Huck! Walt Disney Pictures presents Mark Twain's great American classic, The Adventures of Huck Finn, rated PG. First play of the second quarter is a quick pitch to Bo Hunter that gains absolutely nothing on the ground for William Penn. They're pinned deep in their own territory. I'll tell you what, he lost almost four yards on that play. Parallax with the penetrating move, it appeared from the outside as we were coming back out of break. Because you saw the Sally's kids indicate that they wanted a safety on that. Here's where it's really dangerous from an offensive standpoint. The ball is sitting on the one-yard line. Here's Beetson. He's going to keep it and just try and get some breathing room. Gets a little bit, but not much. Yeah, Matt O'Malley stuffing things up the middle there along with John Zimmel. Dangerous spot here. And you knew that Beetson that time was just going to try and get on the tail of Scott Newell and try and wedge things out. But they only wedged it out about a foot. It'll bring up third down. Yeah, you're right. They really didn't get much there. But I guess when you're down there, every little bit helps. The one thing you don't want to do is get, obviously, tackled in the end zone for a safety here. You can count on Beetson keeping the ball or else throwing it. Mm. Nope, hands off right up the middle. And what a great job by the Silesian defensive line. Matt Iglesias. Pete Locke also in there, and Parallax. Parallax played a great game last week we saw against Glasgow. And here, the Colonials will have to punt the ball deep from their own end zone. Well, they did get a couple of yards there. Bruce showing a lot of confidence in his backs to get out of that end zone. Chris Currier does the punting for William Penn. Laudine and Nelson back deep for Salesianum, a bad snap that Courier gets off somehow. What a great job of getting the punt off. Nelson takes it on the 35-yard line. Picks up seven yards before being knocked out of bounds. Penn having a whole lot of trouble with the snaps. And that time, Courier doing a good job just to get the football off. But Sally's now with magnificent field position on the Penn 25-yard line. I don't know how he got that punt off. He had... All sorts of Salesian linemen in his face. Now the ball is sitting on the 25-yard line. First down and 10 for Salesian. Nelson's the lone setback. He gets the football on the right side. Hit at the line of scrimmage and breaks a tackle and does a great job for to gain a first down. Nelson, I thought he was going to be tackled in the backfield. Matt Nelson, Jr., 5'11", 185. Shows some quickness here. Little reversal of field. Good block by Pete Lock and Lightcap downfield. Yeah, great blocking downfield that time. First and 10, the ball's on the 12. Nelson again, right side. Picks up a couple of yards that time. Washington in on the stop for William Penn. Fast moving ball game here. And this is one of those games where you, if you're a coach or a player, it's like, let's hold the clock up here. You know, we don't want this thing to be over before we even get started. Sal's knocking on the door after a first quarter pretty much dominated by William Penn. Second down, the ball just outside the 10 yard line. McGee rolls, he's gonna keep it. The Salesianum players are signaling touchdown, and finally the referees do as well. Dan McGee 
on the touchdown run for Salesianum. McGee's read here is outstanding. He sees the man going to the pitch. He stretches the ball out. It just has to break the plane. And once it did and breaks the plane, it is a touchdown. And then as the ball comes loose, it doesn't mean anything. And Tink will be on for the extra point. Salesianum strikes first. Dan McGee's the holder for Randy Tink, who will try the extra point. The kick is up. And it is wide. The wind took that one and pushed it wide to the left. No good. So with 8.52 left to play here in the first half, Salesianum is on the board first. They lead six to nothing. What an impressive job Dan McGee does as the quarterback of Salesianum. Well, we've mentioned a number of times. He really knows how to read the outside corner and the defensive end play, and he did it excellently there. But the Sals get the upper hand here after... Uh, dodging a couple of bullets in the first quarter and of course as you mentioned in the pregame both of these teams looking to move on and face Ron Dickerson Seaford Blue Jays next week they being a winner yesterday they defeated Christiana 26 to 7 Mike Coverdale rushed for over 130 yards in that game and scored four touchdowns for Seaford and in the division two game which was right here at Baynard Stadium it was a thriller at Baynard Middletown just gets by St. Elizabeth's 22 to 21 the other game taking place right now, the Division II game downstate, Laurel and Sussex Tech. Tink kicks it off for Salesianum. Taken by one of the upbacks who pitches immediately back to Wilson. Good special teams work by William Penn. Well, we'll see if J.R. Beetson can get back to some of the things that they did well on that initial drive when they took it down to the Salesianum 10 before fumbling. First and 10 from the 32-yard line. Beetson under center. He's going to keep it and try and throw the ball. He gets nailed, and the pass is incomplete, intended for Rob Osick. And Jason Geoffrey put a major league hit on Beetson. Once Joffrey made his decision to support against the run, he came hard at Beetson and probably caused JR to throw the ball a little bit sooner than maybe he wanted to. The clock stops, 8.24 left to play here in the first half and bring up a second down and 10 now for the Colonials. They are the defending state champs. High end off to the first back through. That's Wilson. Picks up 13 yards on the ground. Craig Laudine coming up and finally making the stop for Salesianum. And it's, it's the offensive line who is really, you mentioned it before, just does an outstanding job of fake blocking. Well, there's a good job by Hannah sealing off the linebacker pursuit. And if Laudine does not grab the shirt tail, that's six for the Colonials. Once again, the guards, though. McCord, Taylor, along with Scotty Newell, the center, really doing a good job. Devon Wilson carrying the bulk of the offense for the Colonials thus far. Now, this is Hunter. Picks up five yards on the play before Joe Kruska comes up and makes the stop for the Sals. Actually, about four yards on the play. Inside Salesianum territory now at the 49-yard line. This direction in the wing tee is certainly one of the keys against a quick defense like Salesianum. Misdirection again. Beatson looks to throw, and he's going to keep it. Barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. Brian Parallack again on the pursuit of Beatson. Parallack there initially. Pete Lock and Joffrey come up to finish up the job. Beatson may have lost a yard that time. Actually, the ball's sitting just a nose inside the 50. Interestingly, we've talked about the wind being a factor. When the teams have threatened, it has been into the wind, and Salesianum also scored into the wind. That's right. Shows you what we know up here. Third down and long for the Colonials. Beatson wants to throw. He's being pressured, and down he goes. 
Jason Geoffrey on the sack of Beetson, and the punting unit will come onto the field for the William Penn Colonials. Just a whole lot of pressure off of the corner. You'll see him come to him down below. There's Joffrey, and then the rest of them come in, but both Joffrey and Lorem on the safety blitzes doing an excellent job. Courier will punt for the Colonials standing on his own 33-yard line. Laudine and Nelson back deep for the Sals. Parallax on the rush, and we've got a flag down as Nelson muffs the ball, and it's finally recovered by Law Dean. I think one of the up backs from Penn was moving forward on the snap. Looks like he had leaned forward and lost his balance a little bit. And it appeared Jerry White threw the flag at that time. Let's see what the call is. Boy, how impressed are you with Brian Parallax? Just a sophomore in the last two weeks that we've seen him. Kid does a nice job. Let's see if Salas will have them punt it over again. Here's Actually, he's a junior. Yeah, he's a junior. Illegal shift. It was that up back. Mm -hmm. They're going to make him punt the ball over again. Whenever you have Craig Laudine on your punt return team, you want to get him the ball as often as possible. So in a lot of situations, a lot of teams will be happy with that field position. But with Laudine back there, you make him punt it again. We know Matt Nelson uh, muffed that one, as you called. And that was one of those that punters, punt returners usually field the high, booming ones. That was more like a line drive. Last week, we saw Glasgow try to keep the ball away from Laudine. We'll see what Courier does here. Again, he punts towards Nelson's side. They fake the reserve verse. Nelson keeps it. Fooled nobody on the William Penn re re um, downfield team. Saunders finally coming up and making the stop. Nelson lost yardage on that play. Well, Osik was down as the contain man, and Sally said the wall set up to that side, but the first blocker knew that if he was going to block Osik, it would have been a clip, so he had to leave him go, and Osik makes the nice stop. The Sals will take over right on the 20-yard line. 5.27 left to play here in the first half. They lead six to nothing. Hand off to Lightcap. Picks up a couple of yards on first down. Looked like Randy Washington on the stop from the nose guard position for the Colonial defense. It's been a much more balanced Salesiano offense this year than in years past. Last year, Dave Lightcap carried the ball the bulk of the time, but this year they've really spread the ball nicely between Lightcap, Nelson, McGee, and throwing the ball as well. Opens up a whole lot of opportunities for your offense, and they've been very successful with it. Second down play. Nelson on the carry. It looked like McGee and Nelson had a little problem with the exchange once again. I think the problem was Lee Stoppel. <laughs> a lot of penetration and the fact that he's really creating some stalemates at the line of scrimmage. It was a low-scoring game earlier in the year when they met 14 to nothing. Salesiana won that game. And so far, a low-scoring game with four minutes, seven seconds left here in the first half. Third down and seven for the Sals. McGee's going to keep it. And the Colonial defense all over Dan McGee. And once again, it's Lee Stoppel. They're not handling him at the line of scrimmage. It's, it's easy to understand why. Well, it is, but you know, when you run your option, the person you least expect to make the stop on the quarterback is the tackle. So obviously there's a breakdown along the offensive line somewhere. Fourth down, McGee stays in the game. The punting unit comes in. McGee will do the punting. And Bo Hunter will be back deep, standing in his Salesianum territory receive this. McGee kicking into the wind going to bounce and take a, a William Penn bounce at the 43. That's where the Colonials will get the ball. Well, you can see where uh, there's a flag back downfield, and uh, I think you're going to see a little bit of uh, roughing the punter. Talk it over with Pete Locke, one of the Slazianum tri-captains. Saw Bruce Reynolds not real happy with the call.
And maybe we can bring it back and get another look at it as they mark off the penalty that will give Salesianum a first down. So penalties in the kicking game. One working against Salesianum early. Here's the call, roughing the kicker. And that one helping the Sals, a first down. And with 3.12 left in the second quarter, the offense back on the field. After the penalty, the ball is now on the 37-yard line. Salesianum's offense gets a second chance here. First down, light cap, looking for a seam, spins and fights his way for a gain of six on the play. Lightcap not seeing the hole when he got to the line, so a little stutter step before he picked up a few. Throwing down for Salesianum here as they look to tack on some more points. Two and a half left in the second quarter. I thought we'd see the Salesianum offense throw the ball more today, but they're going with the option here. McGee's going to keep it. Good running room, a first down and then some. McGee knocked out of bounds at the 36-yard line, first down into Colonial Territory. Of all the things you watch Salesianum do on offense that Jim has changed, it's the option play, and here's the reason why. McGee runs it so effectively, he turns what many would think would be a passing down because of the time factor into a big, big gain, and he also gets out of bounds and stops the clock. Very savvy quarterback. That's Jason Geoffrey split to the near side. The handoff is to Lightcap, and once again, Lee Stoppel all over David Lightcap. Stoppel having a heck of a first half, and the big guys just dominating the line of scrimmage on the pen left side of the defense. There's no look at it. A stalemate, and Stoppel with another tackle. Stoppel's a senior. 6-2 to 70. Light cap once again, and once again, no running room. Stoppel was at the bottom of that pile, but it was really a whole host of, of uh, colonial defenders. And it'll bring up third down and 13 yards to go now for the Salesianum offense. You know, the running game for Sal is just hasn't opened up. Penn doing a good job shutting down both Lightcap and Nelson. It's only been McGee who's hurt them on that option. A minute 15 first half. Third down and long. Straight drop back for McGee. Sets up the screen to Nelson nicely. Nelson has some blockers. It's going to be short of the first down as Nelson gets knocked out of bounds after picking up Looking like about seven yards on that play. Well, it does turn the ball over to William Penn with 105 left. And Penn with some timeouts. Or no, it's going to be fourth down for Slaziano. I'm sorry. A little ahead of myself. A minute five left. Dan McGee stays in. He'll punt for Slaziano. Hunter is the deep back for the Colonials. Good snap. into the wind, bounces at the 10, and will be downed at the six yard line. That's the second time Dan McGee has gotten the ball inside the 10 yard line, and the Colonials will have less than a minute here with Sally's, the wins at their back. Sally's maybe looking for a reappearance of Leon Lett in a uh, <laughs> William Penn uniform there. And Penn, I'm sure, content to just run out the half. Dangerous field position. Taking a look at the William Penn sidelines. Bruce Reynolds in his 20th year as the head coach of the William Penn Colonials, one of the most successful football coaches in the state of Delaware. We'll see what Bruce has in mind here. He Beatson's gonna keep the football and just barrel his way up the middle. And it appears that Bruce will be content to run out the clock. I'll tell you what, Bill. After the game we did last Friday night down at yeah. Glasgow, this has to be the quickest first half I can remember. And that's in the face as, as Bruce gets ready to head into the locker room in the face of what may have been the longest game we ever did. 
The Colonial offense will just let the clock tick out. There are now five seconds left, and that will do it for the first half as Bruce Reynolds will be content to go into the locker room trailing just by six. We told you this would be a close football game, and it certainly has been that. The only score was a 10-yard touchdown run from Dan McGee, and Salesianum leads this game six to nothing. We'll take a break when we come back. Second half action from Baynard Stadium. This is Dr. Michael Axe with the medical problem of the week. Remember last week we discussed shoulder separation, which was the collarbone to the shoulder blade. Today we're going to discuss shoulder dislocation, which refers to the shoulder socket proper. Already this season we've seen 10 athletes with shoulder dislocation, and most frequently the shoulder comes out the front as opposed to the back. Channel 2 Game of the Week. The first round of the Division I State Tournament, Salesianum clinging to a 6-0 lead. They will get the ball to start the second half, and interestingly enough, they will have the wind at their back as well. Bruce Reynolds deciding he'll take the wind in the fourth quarter. Interesting ball game, only 6-0, and, and kind of uh, strange feelings here at halftime about you're, you're waiting for something to happen. And Short that's kick. what happens. Uh, un just like that, unbelievable. Number 27, Damon Parker recovers the football for the Colonials. Chris, Chris Bieberbach is the, the Salesianum up man who took the ball and the stick, stick was made. The ball pops loose and <laughs> talk about strange feelings. There's the turnover to start the second half and Penn in Salesianum territory. Just like that, first down and 10 for Beetson and the Colonial offense. They keep it on the ground to Wilson, and the Sal's defense is fired up. Mike Iglesias on the stop for the Salesianum defense, and it's funny, during halftime, you said it to me. You said you felt like something strange was going to happen, and before the clock could even tick, it did. Well, one of the things that's interesting is, and it creates that strange feeling, you just get Sally's is letting William Penn hang around here, and uh, Penn's done some nice things, and you just don't want to do that with a William Penn team. They'll, they'll jump up and bite you. Second down play, that's Bo Hunter. Nothing doing that time. Craig Laudine coming up and making the stop. That's Joffrey yeah. over there with the corner support. You know, Jason just does a nice job coming up. He came up quickly, red run, read his keys perfectly, came up, and no gain. It's gonna bring up third and 10. Big play for the Colonials right here after getting the, the break and the momentum on the kickoff. This is a big play on third down and 10. There's Pitlock again. I, it's amazing to me that the handoff was even accomplished there with Pitlock in the backfield on Beetson as he's making the handoff to Devon Wilson. Now it's gonna be fourth down and about six yards to go. The ball's in the 21. I think, yeah, and it looks like William Penn's going to say they're going to go for it here. They've almost got Oh, no got doubt to. about that. You don't punt down in this neck of the woods. And, you know, one of the kids that's been effective throughout the year is Shane Jabrinsky. Watch the big guy dragging across the middle. Beatson wants to throw, has time over the middle. Caught for a touchdown. Number 22, Devon Wilson catches Beetson's perfect pass, and just like that, with 9.50 left to play here in the third quarter, this game is tied. Drabinski does the out, and right up the middle of the field, out of the backfield is Devon Wilson, and nobody there, Penn, cashes in on the Salesianum turnover and even ups the score. Now the crazy formation of the William Penn extra point. They jog out there and it looks like they will try and kick it. Matt Warren will attempt the extra point. It's up and it is good. An unbelievable turn of events with 9.50 left to play third quarter. All of a sudden the Colonials have the lead. We will take a break. When we come back, Salesianum will have the ball on offense. They trail by one. 
can make a big difference in the life of a child. If you like kids, Big Brothers Big Sisters of Delaware can help you help them. Why do they need you? I guess I'd like to have a big brother that, like, if you have problems, you can sit down and talk to him. To have someone to love and to, and to have fun with, so I might be your best boy. Call Big Brothers Big Sisters today. Do it for you and do it for the kids. There once was a more leisurely time when the 12 days of Christmas brought family and friends together. Home Shopping Club brings you 12 weeks of great Christmas gift ideas, from collectibles to jewelry to toys and more, to delight all those on your list. You've got the club. Salazianum scored first in the first half with 8.52 to play in the second quarter. Now as we start the third quarter, William Penn has taken the lead. And the Colonials will kick off once again. It seems like we just did this play. Dave Lightcap carrying the ball for Salazianum. Lightcap looking to read where the hole was. Really never worked up ahead of steam, and the Sals find themselves down one of the few times this year, and the turnover has haunted them throughout the game. The ball, the, both the turnover and the penalty early yeah. on. Yep. The ball is on the 26-yard line. The wind is starting to kick up now. It's at Salazianum's back as Dan McGee brings his troops out under center. First and 10. Option. Nelson, good running room on the right side. Picks up a first down. Got a flag on the far side and in the area where either holding or a clip usually comes into play. There's your signal to clip. Excellent read by McGee. The quick pitch as he reads the play of Drabinski. Couldn't see where the clip may have come in, but you see a lot of heads turning in that direction of the flag. There's the penalty again, hurting Salesianum. That will negate that gain of Nelson and push Salesianum deep into their own territory here. You know, whenever these two teams play, rarely does the game get out of hand. We had the opportunity last year to watch one of those that did in the finals on that blustery day over there at Bill Cole Field where uh, Penn won 21 to nothing. But this game's going to go down to the wire, and anything can happen. That's why Salazianum finds their, themselves in a uh, battle right here. First down, McGee wants to throw. Fires over the middle, complete to Laudine. Laudine is off to the races, to the 20, and finally brought down inside the 10-yard line by Vassal Dilliard. No flags down, and the big gainer for the Sals. That's uh, 59 yards, and it's not much. Just a nice throw. He's almost on the fly here, breaks the tackle. And just like that, the quick strike capability of the Salazian offense puts them in a first and goal. Well, they can actually get a first down, Bill. It's just outside the 10-yard line. A pickup of 59 yards. McGee to Laudine. It was Dillard with its stop for the Colonials defense, saving a touchdown. Now McGee goes back to the option play. Again, working that right side, picks up four yards on that play, maybe five that time. I gotta tell you what, make that 69 yards. The play started from the 21. Right, I'm counting right. my stripes here and, uh, oof, a bullet from McGee. And he's been on the money on many of his passes here this afternoon. Hasn't thrown too often today, but his passes have been right there. You remember, he, Laudine just missed a long gainer. It was just uh, beyond his fingertips in the first half, and then he did complete one to Laudine. Second down and five. For the Sals, balls at the five-yard line. McGee again playing option, has a hole, touchdown! 
Dan McGee responds for the Salesianum offense and with 7.46 to play here in the third quarter, Salesianum is back on top. They lead now 12 to seven. I'll tell you, that didn't take long. And as you watched on replay, McGee just saw the seam, shook off one tackler at the line of scrimmage and pranced in. And I'm sure you'll see Salesiano go for two here. 12 to seven. And they answered with emphasis. <laughs> yes, they did. With that big touchdown pass from McGee to Laudane. And you are correct, Angie. They will go for two. The ball will set on the three yard line. They missed an extra point earlier, and now we have a flag. The Souths took too much time. Now, does that change your decision at all? No, I don't think so. You, you know, you still, uh, the extra point only takes you to 13 7, where you only have six points. Separating. My guess is they'll still go for two. And I'm sure they're confident that there's more to come for them also. Jerry White's officiating crew here today. Been a relatively penalty-free game. We've had a couple of calls, but have been good calls. As you look at Dan McGee. Two touchdowns already today for McGee. And now they send three receivers to the far side of the field. And McGee is looking that way. Flags down, intended for light cap, incomplete. We'll have to wait and see what the penalty is. Well, it's a hold against Salesianum, and I'm sure it'll be declined by Penn. So the differential, <laughs> there, you think they're going to decline it? With There you go, all those signals from the sideline. <laughs> Bruce Reynolds very emphatic. So after only one score in the first half, we start the second half here very quickly with two quick touchdowns, and Salesianum responds to, the, to William Penn touchdown. 7.46 to play here in the third quarter. We'll take a break. When we come back, the Colonials will be back on offense. They now trail by five. It's been a pleasure for Tom DeLucia, Chartered Life Underwriter and Financial Consultant, to sponsor Delaware High School Sports. For over 25 years, Tom DeLucia has served the people of Delaware with personalized insurance programs. Tom DeLucia can take the mystery out of financial planning and insurance by finding a program to meet your needs. Learn the real purpose of life insurance, disability insurance, IRAs, and other retirement plans. Tom has earned the trust and respect of his many clients, and you too can experience that same personal service. Call Tom DeLucia at 478-9505 or visit him at 9 The Common, Silverside Road. America's smallest hero is lost in America's biggest city. Can I help you? Reservation from McAllister? Is it me? Hiya, pal. Oops. Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. What kind of idiots do you have working here? The finest in New York. Rated PG. Welcome back to Banner Stadium. Randy Tink tees the ball off and has a deep kick with the wind of his back that bounces off the chest of Bo Hunter. And the Colonials will start on offense at the 20-yard line. Well, there's... Tink says, yeah, I knew I had my leg was that strong. Well, the wind of the back certainly helps out there, but nice hang time. And Penn, with the euphoria of taking the lead, now the offense takes the field 80 yards to go to pay dirt. But with a little bit of confidence after having punched it in after that opening turnover by Salesianum. We'll see if Bruce Reynolds' offense decides to throw the football a little bit more here in the second half. Nope, they stick to the ground game right up the middle. Kruska makes the tackle on Wilson, carrying the football for good yardage right up the, actually only a couple of yards that time up the middle. That Salesiana defense really has shown its mettle throughout the year against a rugged schedule. But they've been tested today. The Penn offense, especially the ground game, has been effective at, at various points in the ballgame. And it's been mostly Devon Wilson, not Bo Hunter, we've seen. 
Second down and 10. Now Beetson wants to throw. He's being chased. The ball is loose. That's and Salesiano recovers. And it's going to be a touchdown for Mike Peatlock. There you go. It's the support of the defensive secondary that causes the fumble. And absolutely nowhere for Beetson to go. It appeared to be light cap. Bottom of your screen. He wraps Beetson up. The ball's already loose. Peatlock scoops it up. And just like that, Salesiano with the defensive score, and they go up 18 to 7. Number 85, Mike Peatlock, the 6'1, 220-pound senior, scores the touchdown for the Souths, who now lead 18 to 7. 702 left in the third quarter. And now once again, Salesiano will go for the two-point play. McGee wants to throw. Com no, it's incomplete. In and out of the hands of Dave Lightcap down there. So with 7.02 left to play, this has been a very exciting third quarter so far. Well, it has been, and the Salesianum defense did what they had to do there. Lightcap, though, maintains his outside leverage and keeps Beetson inside. The resulting strip and touchdown by Peatlock and the Sounds with a little bit of breathing room. You can bet that uh, that guy right there, though, has a few things up his sleeve. 11 point differential. And still seven minutes left to go here in the third quarter with William Penn operating into what's becoming an even stiffer win. Tank another big kickoff that Hunter takes inside the 10. Has some running room around the outside. The speed of Bo Hunter out to midfield. And the William Penn fans are on their feet trying to get some life back into the William Penn Colonial offense here. Outstrip the containment. Exactly what the, what the kick return team wants to do. Get your speed outside. And the result is the ball right at midfield and Penn coming back at you. First and 10 from the 50. That's Hunter in motion. They fake it to him. Beatson wants a throw. Complete to Wilson for a first down and a gain of 15 yards. Actually, not bad coverage by Grushka, but a wonderful catch by Devon Wilson. Watch this. And fine touch by J.R. Beatson. Just tosses it right in. And a one-handed grab and a first down for William Penn. Devon Wilson is having a fine game here this afternoon at Baynard. Now the ball at the 35-yard line in Salesianum territory. Flags everywhere as they stop that play. It looked like there was some motion, perhaps on the William Penn side of the ball. Pete Lock in there talking things over with the officials. There's not a whole lot you can do here. You have to take the penalty. Yeah. We mentioned Jerry White, the referee. Bio Spence is the umpire. Gary Ward's a linesman. Mike Brittingham, the line judge. John Bowden, the back judge. And Brian Whaley, the clock operator from the Delmarva Football Officials Association, who've made the trip up to Newcastle County. This being the game that they were assigned, the Northern Delaware Football Officials Association downstate this afternoon. First and 15. Yep, they'll get their five yards back. And, <laughs> and just like that, they will take that back. We had a relatively penalty-free first half, and for the most part, the third quarter has been penalty-free until just the last couple of moments. Clock stop, six minutes left to play here in the third quarter. We are broadcasting from Baynard Stadium, the home of Salesianum football. The first round of the Division I state tournament, the winner today plays Seaford next week, probably in Dover, although we're not sure about that yet, for the Division I state championship. Take three. Wilson up the middle. Good yardage on first down, gain of eight on the play. Geoffrey in there on the stop. From a first down standpoint, the Penn offense has been very effective. 
picking up substantial yardage, and there's some decent calls that they have to make on second and short. Yeah, and it's been pretty much the running right up the middle of Wilson on first down. They haven't done a lot of different things on first down. So Lazy Adams showing a four-man front with the center uncovered most of the time. Same play. Not quite the same result that time. Brett Riley in on defense for Salesianum. Actually, that was Matt Dolphin, number 48, coming up and making the stop on Wilson that time. Short of a first down, it'll bring up third down in less than a yard. Good drive by Dolphin. Uh, two big forces meeting each other there head on. Good leg drive by both kids. The Sal's in their goal line defense. Big play right here, and the penalty markers are down. Encroachment on the defense, so that's going to be another pen first down. Four minutes, 30 seconds left, third quarter. The ball is now right on the 20-yard line. It'll be first down and 10 for the Colonials as they get the first down that time by the penalty. And Jim Brazel, the head coach of Salesianum, not too pleased with that play. Well, he knows he's in a dogfight right now. Wilson up the middle. Big running room on first down. Inside the 10-yard line, Laudine coming up and making the stop for the Sows. That same play on first down, Devon Wilson behind the running of that offensive line. Once again, it's the blocks of Newell, Taylor, and McCord. And Devon Wilson having an excellent afternoon. Big yardage up to the middle. So yeah, Justin McCord's having a great game from the, from the guard position, the left guard spot. First and goal inside the 10. Wilson again up the middle, close to the goal line, and a touchdown. Watch Nate Taylor pull out of his right guard position on the short trap. We talked about the ability of that oh, short trap, boom, right there. Frees up the lane and into the end zone. See what Bruce decides to do. He's down by five. Two points brings him within three and the potential field goal for a tie, or does he go for one? 349 left third quarter. Salesianum leading by five, 18 to 13. They're going for the two-point play here. Beatson wants to throw. He's being rushed. Sets up the screen and caught, and the two-point play is good. Jamal Smith with the reception and the two-point conversion, and just like that, William Penn right back in this game. They now only trail by three. 3.49 left to play here in the third quarter. Tighten your seat belts. We've got an exciting one from Baynard. Hi, I'm Dave Stosik from Wesley College, and I've got a question for you. Where do Delaware's brightest high school students compete for scholarships, cash awards, and a trip to the national championships? If you answer the Texaco Star Academic Challenge, then you're right on the mark. Watch each Wednesday and Sunday night at 6.30 on Cable Channel 2 as our students go head-to-head -head in fast-paced academic competition. They'll vie for recognition and scholarships from all seven colleges and universities in the state. We've got the questions. You'll get the answers on the Texaco Star Academic Challenge on Cable Channel 2. They stole $100 million in midair and lost it. Now, to get it back... Recognize these locations? They'll make one man a hostage. You're not going after him. Which was have I got? And the other a moving target. <laughs> Cliffhanger. Rated R. Welcome back to Baynard Stadium. Bill Kamizroff in for Jim Hayes, who's out in Montana with the Fighting Blue Hens this afternoon. My partner, Angie Rossi. And Angie, you've got a great game here so far. Three-pointer, can't ask for much more. Come on. 
That's Matt O'Malley catching the football for Salesianum. And they will come out on offense at the 29 yard line, first down and 10. I think Sally's may have had something set up on that kickoff return. And when it came to O'Malley, uh, the kids just didn't react. Dan McGee under center. That's Nelson, left side, picks up a couple on first down. Ernest Sanders coming up and making the stop from the linebacker spot. Also, Jamal Smith in on the stop for the Colonial defense. Gain of two for Nelson. Nelson and Lightcap very, very quiet here this afternoon. And the Penn defense has done a good job against the major portion of that Sal's running attack. That young guy right there with two touchdowns. And Dan McGee does not like what he sees. He calls timeout. He wants to talk things over with coach Jim Brazel. And the Salesianum offense going over to the sidelines now to talk with, over with coach Brazel. They lead by three. Boy, the complexion of this game has changed a couple of times here in the third quarter. Well, it has done that. A lot of scoring has transpired here. But one of the things that's happened is William Penn has certainly picked up a whole lot of momentum. You would have thought that when they got the turnover that turned into the Salesianum touchdown by Pete Lock defensively. It may have let a little bit of air out of the Colonial balloon, but it did not. They came right back, sustained a drive, and went in to cut the lead to three points. So certainly in the ball game here, and from a Salesianum standpoint, you gotta believe that they're beginning to wonder, what do we have to do to put these guys away? And this is an important drive for Salesianum with 2.48 left in the quarter. After this quarter, Salesianum will be going into the win so it's a very important drive from both standpoints. The Colonial defense wants to stop them here. Salesianum wants to get some more points on the board while they still have the wind at their back. In obvious running situations, uh, Sal's have gone to the pass. Got Laudine flanked out in the wide slot. The middle of the field's been very effective for he and McGee this afternoon. Second down play for McGee. He's gonna play option again, and he's, again, he's gonna keep it. Tripped up that time by Saunders after a pickup of four yards on the play. Tony Orga leading the blocking for McGee. Well, you mentioned it, Bill. The first down here is important for Salesianum. They want to sustain a drive. But more importantly, play some field position as they get into fourth quarter. Third down and a long three for the Sals. Movement on the offensive line, and it looked like the William Penn defensive line jumped off sides that time. Well, there's a little touche, Salesianum <laughs> having been drawn off side by William Penn. It might have been McGee's cadence that time. Well, he went to the longer count, just as J.R. Beetson had done before. And... Now Salesianum picks up the first down due to the encroachment call against Penn. Under two minutes now to play here in the third quarter. First and 10 for Salesianum. Ball at the 40. Here's the reverse to Laudine. And the Colonials were waiting for that play. Waiting for it in the, in the person of Sam Hanna. He wasn't fooled at all by the reverse action. Here comes Laudine, top of your screen. Hanna, he's there. Bo Hunter was there also, both of them having contained the play. Salesianum ran that play a couple of times last week against Glasgow. Coach Brazel likes to get the ball in Laudine's hands any way possible. One-on-one -on -one coverage on Laudine. There he it is. Has time over the middle, looking for Laudine, and it's almost intercepted. Damon Parker, Parker broke on the ball very nicely. There's the middle of the field again. Laudina McGee working. Parker breaks on the ball. Boy, if Parker does not get a piece of that, Laudina's gone. Well, let's see if Salesianum coaches don't do a little 
stop and go if they hook up Parker on single coverage with Laudine a little bit later. <laughs> Third down and 14 now for the Sals. That's one of the ones you put back in the memory banks. The Colonial fans now on their feet, and it's almost intercepted in and out of the hands of Bo Hunter. That was not one of the better passes we've seen Dan McGee throw. Well, I don't know who it was going to. Two receivers in the area behind one and in front of another. Oh, they will look at that and think what could have been. Everything's swinging pins way here now. The Salesiano punting unit on the field. Dan McGee will do the punting on fourth down. Good snap, gets the kickoff. Hunter fields it cleanly. Good punt return by Bo Hunter out to the 35 yard line. What a hard nosed football player. Well, he split the three initial pursuers and almost broke free. But as I mentioned, momentum definitely in William Penn's favor here. The defense comes up with a big stop and now the offense tries to see what they can do down three. They've had a lot of success running the ball on first down with Devon Wilson just firing up the middle. And no reason to change it here, but that time the Salesiano defense was there to make the stop. Number 47, John Zimmel. Kruska also coming up and filling from the linebacker position. One of the few times that the Salesiano defense have stopped Wilson on first down. Well, the misdirection didn't work that time, and the pulling guard got the nice trap block on Petlock, but Grushka wasn't having any of it. He stayed right in the middle. 15 seconds left to play here in the third quarter. Second down and 10, no gain on the play. Now, Bruce Reynolds trying to get his team to hurry up here. They might not get this play off. They're gonna have to hurry. And now penalty markers are thrown. That's going to be encroachment against Salesiano again. Another five yards. The third time we've seen that penalty here in the third quarter. Kids are reacting to sounds now and not to the movement of the ball. And a coach or defensive lineman to catch the ball out of the corner of their eye. That's going to be the end of the third quarter. Two seconds left on the clock, and it now expires. The third quarter is in the books here at Baynard. Fourth quarter action coming up next. We'll take a break. Salesianum clinging to a three-point lead. Foley's Jewelers is proud to bring you this exquisite diamond and gold engagement ring with its glistening marquee center diamond and 18 round sparkling channel set diamonds. Foley's value price, just $1,898. A lovely matching wedding band is also available. You'll be proud to wear this beautiful diamond. Remember at Foley's, we say yes to your credit request. First comes love. was a more leisurely time when the 12 days of Christmas brought family and friends together. Home Shopping Club brings you 12 weeks of great Christmas gift ideas, from collectibles to jewelry to toys and more, to delight all those on your list. You've got the club. Colonials now have their wi the wind at their back, and on second down, they try a reverse and a flea flicker back to Beetson. He has a man open over the middle. Incomplete intended for Drabinsky. Actually, Sam Hanna downfield. Hanna wide open on the flea flicker. These guys are pulling out all the stops. Clock stops now, third down, five yards to go for the Colonials. Hanna was open that time. 
It wasn't a very crisp flea flicker, though, for the Colonials. A lot of penetration by the Salesianum defense. Wilson up the middle. And he's going to be stopped well short of the first down as the William Penn defense buckles down that time. And the punting unit for the Colonials will come out onto the field. We really haven't seen Bo Hunter run the ball that much today for the Colonials. Well, Devon Wilson's had such an effective day. And recall earlier, Penn with a lot of trouble on the snaps. Wind at the back. Laudine standing at the 25-yard line. Line drive kick that Laudine catches after the bounce. Oh, they got it set up here. Yep. Watch Craig Laudine. That's an excellent job by Shane Drabinski. Fought off the wall almost by himself because Salesianum had it set up for Laudine at the near sideline. The ball will be spotted at the 37-yard line, first and 10 for the Sals. They lead by three. That's where you want your punt coverage team to keep them pinned back, and Salesiana with a decent return. McGee's going to play option here. Now he pitches it to Lightcap. Picks up a couple on first down on the far side of the field, right in front of Jim Brazel. Vassal Dillard coming up and making the stop for the Colonials. It'll be second down and six. Angie and I coming to you today in the midst of the William Penn Marching Band. Option once again for McGee, who again keeps it. Fights and kicks his way for a first down. I'm not, I, I don't know how he did that. He dragged about three defenders along with him, but he was not gonna stop till he had the first down. That's because the primary tackler was trying to take him down by his jersey, and then a couple of kids came in and just pushed the pile forward. The option really being the only effective running play for that guy right there, the Salesianum staff, trying to come up with the answers. They would like a long, sustained drive here in the fourth quarter. They'd like to put some more points on the board. Now option again to the far side. Penalty markers down. McGee keeps it, and a big gainer for Dan McGee, but this one's going to come back. Knocked out of bounds at the 25-yard line, but penalty markers down at the line of scrimmage. Time and time again, Dan McGee just shows he's, there's your holding call. The kid knows how to run the option. Excellent reads on the corner. Watch here again. Even though he had to bow it back because of the penetration of the defense, he read the, he read the actions of the support person who was leaning towards pitch. He cut it up inside. All negated, though, by the hold. Dan McGee takes a lot of punishment in that Salesian on backfield. Last week, I, we saw him take a hit by one of the Glasgow defenders who blitzed on him. I think it was Antoine Heyman, and, and McGee just got right up, brushed it off. He's just a real tough kid. Well, they're going to have to tough it out at first and about 20 right here. They're back into their own territory now. Ball at the 42-yard line. McGee wants to throw. Straight drop back. Sets Nelson up for the screen. And what a Major League Football play that time by Bo Hunter. The play was slow in developing because of the penetration of the defense. And Bo Hunter had it all away. See, there's the guy that screws it up first. That's Sam Hanna. Boom, Bo Hunter. Oh, my goodness gracious. That's corner support. But it was Sam Hanna pushing the offensive line back that caused McGee to hesitate initially. Good hit that time, Hunter on Nelson. Salesian now second down and a long way to go. Option. Go to what you do the best. And look at Dan McGee run the football. Picks up 12 yards on the play. 
Tackled by Dillard finally. Back into colonial territory. Yeah, you're right. It doesn't matter how much yardage you need for the first down that time. Go right back to the option. Here's play. the read. Cut up field. Break it outside. Actually had pitch right there, probably for touchdown, but decided to just try and get the few extra yards. Third and ten. Jason Geoffrey brings the play in for Salesiana. It'll be third down and ten. The ball at the 49-yard line in Colonial Territory. Salesiana leads 18 to 15, under eight minutes left to play. Flags down, they're going to stop this play. Looked like one of the Salesiana players might have moved early that time. That's the call. Well, I believe that call is for lack of uh, proper equipment. Is that what that is? Failure to wear required equipment. Somebody didn't have the mouth guard in. So that will back up to a third down and 15. Slazy Adams sort of doing a dosy -si do with the 50 yard line here on this possession. Oh, it's a big possession. The clock becomes a factor here at 745 and running. You get a couple of more first downs here, and Penn's in big trouble. He wants to throw. Oh, my. And all over him, led by Dravinsky. Dravinsky, Stoppel, in there. and Saunders all there. And the Salesiana offense going in reverse, hurt with the penalty. Here's another look. Dravinsky untouched, Stoppel, and Saunders there for the wrap-up. Salesianum needing to call a timeout here with not enough players on the field. Even though they're leading by three, the momentum is certainly with the Colonials right now, and Salesianum has a fourth down play coming up, and they use their second timeout of the half. 6.57 left to play here in the football game. Timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout as well. The Sal's lead 18 to 15. Six fifty-seven left to play here in the football game. Timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout as well. The Sal's lead eighteen to fifteen. Every morning, we send our children one day closer to their future. That's why at Bank of Delaware, every time you get a loan or open a new account. We'll give you special credits to help your local schools get the athletic gear, computer equipment, and other learning tools that children need. Because at Bank of Delaware, we believe that the best investment in the future is an investment in our children. It's been a pleasure for Tom DeLucia, Chartered Life Underwriter and Financial Consultant, to sponsor Delaware High School Sports. For over 25 years, Tom DeLucia has served the people of Delaware with personalized insurance programs. Tom DeLucia can take the mystery out of financial planning and insurance by finding a program to meet your needs. Learn the real purpose of life insurance, disability insurance, IRAs, and other retirement plans. Tom has earned the trust and respect of his many clients, and you too can experience that same personal service. Call Tom DeLucia at 478-9505 or visit him at 9 The Common, Silverside Road. Under seven minutes to decide who will be playing Seaford next week in the championship game. Salesiano has a fourth down and long play here. McGee will do the punting for the Sals. 
Good snap. Here come the Colonials. McGee again once he gets it off into the wind. Takes a lateral bounce and stops at the 36, 37 yard line, we'll call it, where the Colonials will have first down and 10. With the wind now at their back, they trail by three. Can't ask for anything more. Quarter, a semifinal game in the state tournament, Division I. Two Giants, Salazian and William Penn, and it's going to come down to one of the last drives. The first time these two schools met was 1921. Salazian won that game seven to nothing. And it's been a great rivalry over the years, especially in the recent history. Wilson up the middle. Awfully close to a first down, tripped up by O'Malley. There's the play that's been so successful. The guards, once again, the key. Watch one of them pull over. There's the trap. And Wilson sneaks right up behind. Nate Taylor, Justin McCord, two excellent wing T guards. Devon Wilson's having a fine afternoon as the they will bring the chains out to measure this one. It's going to be just short of the first down. You just get the feeling that Salazian is back on their heels right now, Bill, and the Penn kids are just taking it to them. And here's where you, you hope one of your big play defenders comes up and makes it. They've already scored one defensive touchdown today. That was Mike Peatlock on the 20-yard fumble recovery. That was with 7.02 left in the third quarter. That gave Salesianum an 18-7 lead. But the Colonials certainly have not gone away here this afternoon. Second down and in inches. Look for Beaton here perhaps to keep the ball. Nope, gives it to Wilson, who easily picks up the first down, picks up four yards on the play. O'Malley on the stop for Salesianum. And Devon Wilson has been the workhorse back for Bruce Reynolds here this afternoon. First and 10, the ball just on the other side of the 50-yard line. Under six minutes to go now. Plenty of time. Beatson's gonna keep it this time. Has some running room and awfully close to a first down. We'll see where they spot it. He gets out of bounds to stop the clock. J.R. Beatson carrying the football, and I was just waiting for that play. And yes, he's going to say he has a first down. Knowing Bruce Reynolds the way... Here's the feed inside. Don't know if there was a mix-up in the backfield or not, but the net result is another first down for William Penn. Well into Salesianum territory at the South 38. Back to Wilson up the middle who barrels his way for a gain of six on the play. Way too much running room up the middle. Nick Rodriguez in the game for Salesiana making the stop that time on Wilson, but on first down, Wilson picks up six yards that time. It's the same play also. Guard trap, short trap, and Devon Wilson with a lot of running room. 5.05 left to play in the game. Second down and four. Wilson again hit in the backfield and gets back to the line of scrimmage. It was Kruska who had the initial hit on Wilson that time. Now I get, the, I get the feeling that the Slazianum defense is starting to key on Wilson a bit. Well, uh, Grushka coming on the blitz. And as we get down to the 440 mark, Penn not within field goal range at this point, still in need of a couple more first downs. And Bruce Reynolds wants to call timeout. The Colonials take their first time out of the second half. We'll take a break with 424 left to play in this football game. The Colonials facing a big third down play when we get back. They trail by three. One of the most exciting things about QVC is, is that we're on the cutting edge of electronics or photography.
I don't think if you went into an electronic store, you would get half of the information that we give you on one item in just an eight-minute program presentation. Walt Disney Pictures. Huck Finn was the kind of boy who went looking for trouble. Come on, Finn! And usually found it. You're going to end up with the devil himself. That'd be just fine by me. He fought for freedom. Oh, busted Jim out. He lived for danger. It's the boy with that runaway slave! Come on! And he loved every minute of it. Walt Disney Pictures presents Mark Twain's great American classic, The Adventures of Huck Finn, rated PG. A big third down play for the Colonials. Never really materialized. Boy, the Salesiano defense all over Wilson that time. Well, and now your season almost comes down to this play because as you called it, a mix-up in the backfield after the timeout. And Beetson with seemingly nowhere to go. And the result is a loss of about a yard and a half. You can see Devon's upset. Fourth down now for the Colonials. And a bunch of new faces checking into the game here for William Penn. And it's their punting unit is now on the field. Oh, my. You know, I can't believe Slazana would look for a punt here. No way. There it is. It's a fake punt. It's almost like the fumble Ruski, and they read it. Yeah. That's Iglesias. Interesting play, but it doesn't work. They snapped it to the up back. Watch him hide it. He hides it, tucks it in, and they pretend like nobody's going anywhere. Bo Hunter, though, has the ball and Salesianum had it all the way. The Sals will take over on offense now. 3.22 left to play in the football game, and Salesianum will keep it on the ground. I imagine McGee will probably run the ball the majority of the times here. They will try and run out the clock here. Well, the wind is really starting to pick up in the face of Salesianum, but they'll bleed the clock now. There's the option. A dangerous pitch to Lightcap. Well, the option lost, not a, a, lost a yard. Not a high percentage play here. Penn with two timeouts, I believe. And when I say high, it's a high risk play. Mm -hmm. It's a high percentage play anytime McGee runs the option. But the Sal's now. Well, that was a that, that <laughs> was a dangerous play. That really was it. When you think about what's at stake at this point in the game, you really just want to get you know get a couple of first downs and, and let this thing run out if you're Salesianum. Two and a half minutes left to play. Second down and nine. We'll see if McGee runs option the other way. McGee on the keeper. I'm not sure if that was a broken play well, or that was designed. No, it's a broken play. And uh, he went to reach for Nelson on the handoff, and Nelson was by him. Penn not choosing to call the timeout after this play. My guess is they'll do it after the next. But there's the look at it as McGee turns, reaches for the handoff to Nelson. But he was already by him, so as quarterbacks are taught to do, turn it right up into the hole. That's Brett Riley giving the play to Dan McGee. Third down and seven. The ball's resting on the 40. 138 left to play. McGee passes complete to Lightcap. It's going to be short of a first down. The ball is loose. Well, that play was blown dead. Yeah. But the clock will keep moving. I'm really surprised that no timeout's been taken here. Now now Bruce Reynolds is going to call the timeout. With a minute 17, he's going to actually now 16, and Bruce will get the timeout. A minute 16 left to play. A big third down play. I believe it's going to be fourth down right now for Salesianum. So you can expect a couple of things here. Bruce is going to be loading up and trying to block the punt. That's for sure. 116 left. Do you put anybody back at all to receive it? Well, you know, at this point in time, you have to have somebody back there because the last thing you want to do is if you don't block the punt for the ball to just roll endlessly. So maybe you load up with 10. But from a Salesianum standpoint, you got to get the ball off, number one. Number two, 
you get down the field and you cover the football and you don't look for any returns, always keeping outside containment. From a William Penn standpoint now, one timeout left, having used two. They want to block the punt and look to scoop it up and score. Interesting end to the ball game, and one of these two teams will come out of it after 1-16 and go on to play the Seaford Blue Jays, and we found out from the state tournament committee and the person of Frank Shea that that game will be next Saturday at 2 o'clock at Cesar Rodney. And the Division II game will be at 11 o'clock at Lake Forest. Bo Hunter is back for William Penn, standing just on the other side of the 30-yard line. McGee will do the punting. Penn's Not returning. much pressure. Yeah, they put a return on. And Hunter lets it bounce and has to get away from it. It takes a William Penn bounce, and it will stand at the 28-yard line, where the Colonials will have 82 yards and a minute and seven to try and get back into this football game. They only trail by three, and they do have the wind at their back. This is tough duty. Clock's running right now, and they're not up to the line of scrimmage. But you got to play prevent if you're the Salesianum secondary. South's still up relatively tight. Here's Beetson being pressured. It's a screen. Complete on the screen pass to, to Jamal Smith. Now William Penn call, trying to call a timeout. And they finally get it with 43 seconds left. That play gains six yards. Well, the screen was set up initially, but the Salesianum defender did an excellent job once the ball went over his head to come back and make the tackle. Here's the setup. The screen is there. But for Salesianum, out of his defensive end spot, number 34, that's Ro Nick Rodriguez. He comes back and makes the tackle because there was a lot of green there, but still, from a clock standpoint, a lot of seconds tick off, and Penn now has used their last timeout. 43 seconds left to play. Salesianum trying to hang on here. Lisa, our camera person, hi Lisa. Enjoying today's football game right in the middle of that colonial marching band. A, cu a couple of things that Penn has done in the past here. The old hook and ladder play where they hit you right. and pitch it. That's something you may look for, but they have to get the ball down the field considerably here. Beats and lofts it up, and it's intercepted. It's intercepted by Jason Gioffrey. And barring any major disaster, Salesianum will be playing for the state tournament championship title next week. Well, there's the look, and pass intended for Hannah on a straight fly. Joffrey broke to the football nicely and landed with those feet in bounds. I don't think Hannah ever saw the football. I don't think he did either. As a matter of fact, didn't appear he was looking at it initially. Well, there's a stoppage of the clock here. Neither team. Let's see, Penn with no timeouts. I'll run the clock now. McGee will just have to take one snap here. Put his knee down, and that's going to do it. Well, they can't. Uh, the ball was not ready to put okay. in play yet. Uh, I got encroachment on Penn. Well, as you called it, 30 seconds left, and barring anything unforeseen here, there's your tail. Soleil Janum will escape. I think that's a good word today, Bill, because Penn, good point. as the underdog came in, with an outstanding effort, offensively running the ball almost at will up the middle, and the Sals with the big defensive turnover. Light cap causing the fumble, Pete Lock taking it in. That's the difference in the ball game. Now McGee takes the snap, goes down to one knee. The Colonials cannot stop the clock, and the reign of the defending state champion, William Penn Colonials, will come to an end this afternoon at Baynard Stadium. The Sals of Salesianum win their ninth game of the year, only the third loss for William Penn, as these two schools congratulate themselves in the middle of the football field right now. An outstanding played football game here this afternoon at Baynard. Salesianum hangs on for an 18 to 15 win. You know, these two squads, and you'll see a lot of camaraderie out here, these two squads go at each other a couple of times a year. 
kids all know each other, and this was an excellent football game. The second half in particular, where the kids really got after it offensively, but uh, turnovers playing an important role, and the biggest one, the sack by Lightcap of J.R. Beetson, the resulting fumble scooped up by Pete Locke, and Salazianum goes on to win 18 to 15. That's gonna do it for our broadcast this afternoon from Baynard Stadium. Next week, we will have the Division I state championship game for you here on the Game of the Week as Salesianum will take on the undefeated Seaford Blue Jays. That's next weekend here on the Channel 2 High School Game of the Week. Our thanks to all of our camera people and our crew. For Angie Rossi and Jim Hayes, I'm Bill Kamizarov. We'll talk to you next week for the Division I state championship game between the Salves of Salesianum and the Blue Jays of Seaford. The final score once again, Salesianum wins this one 18-15. Good night, everybody.